two. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. This is the first word, and I'm your host, Pastor Rashi Taylor, aka PT, the sneaker preacher, back again with the first word. And we are looking at love found a way. We're talking about going into the great controversy and dealing with the love of God, its immense sacrifice that it did to reconcile man and God. But of course, you know, I don't do this solo. I am not by myself. I have my good brother, Pastor J.D. Miller, that's joining us today. Pastor, how are you today? Doing good. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's good to be back in the spot. Good morning. Good. Back in the spot and good to be back with you, my brother. Thank you for joining us once again. Yes. And we have Dr. J. as always. How are you, Dr. J? Good morning, everybody. I'm good. I'm good. Amen. And the good position... Uh, Dr. Drew, how are you today? I'm doing all right this morning. How's everybody doing? We are alive and well. Thank you for joining us. And my last but not least guest, Michael Bellamy Sr. is here with us from the front lines of OAA. Brother, how are you today? OAA all in my DNA. Uh, good morning <laughs> to everyone. Rise and shine. Give God the glory. Uh, Amen. You know, mother, got the little red sticks. We kind of pop, pop, pop the little jingle bell. So, wake up everybody. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Look at it. He is a living cup of coffee. Won't he do it? So, so we thank everyone for joining us today, panelists and participants alike, as well as you, our online guests. So what we need for you to do is share this by simply being an Apple Apostle, digital disciple, electronic evangelist, and share what you've seen, share what you've heard with somebody else. Just go ahead, like, share, and subscribe so that the gift of God goes forward and you are going and yeeing and therefore and teaching all nations with just a click of a button. All right, so let us pray. And as we go into this, this program, we use the space method, which is simply S, the sin to confess, P, a promise to claim, A, an attitude to adopt or just C, a command to obey, and E, an example to follow. So this is a way of note taking so that you can have a richer experience here at the first word. All right, Dr. J, can you pray for us, please? Absolutely. God, we're just so thankful for another opportunity to get together and talk about your word. And today, God, it's all about a fresh revelation. Be with us, Holy mm -hmm. Spirit. Give us guidance, wisdom, understanding, and may we walk forward with something new, not only for ourselves, but something that we can share with someone else. We love you so much and we thank you in your name. We pray. Amen. 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 What a mighty God we serve. So we're looking at love found a way. We are talking about the great controversy, specifically as it relates to uh, the book of Revelation this week and, and some various verses, some various chapters and verses in there. So we'll start with Pastor J.D. as we look at war in heaven. How was it possible for war to break out in this perfect, peaceful, god center place? How was it possible? for that to happen. And what does it mean when it says war? Is it hand-to-hand -hand combat, angels uh, throwing hands, <laughs> fisty cups, if you will, or, or was it something else <laughs> that, 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 that was going on in heaven there? Listen, for all those those questions, I'm gonna say, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you know it's funny because I, I, I was there thinking about and contemplating about, you know, uh, we as um, um parents um with babies um and some of us we, we raise them in a um, pretty much a sterile type of environment for those of us who are desire for our children to 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 grow up um in the right way and i you know i thought to myself um how how amazing um these experiences can be and how you know how you know we try to do the best and do the you know for our children and as they get older, you see that that you know, you know, when they're born, they see that cute little face, and you know, it's like, man, this is a perfect child. And then when when you look around, 
you know, they're doing things you're like, what in the world is going on? Where did you get that from? How in the world is that even possible? Um, mm -hmm. And so it made me think about the um, book of Genesis, actually, uh, Genesis chapter 4, where you find in that, uh, in that chapter, um, Cain killing his brother. Where did he get that from? How mm. in the world did that come up? So to even answer that question of, of, of um, you know, how is it possible? You know, it mm -hmm. is really, and I, and I joking say I don't know, but when we try to think about these things, we really don't know. But, um, you know, we one thing I can say is that God created us uh, free thinkers. We are we created with the, the ability to to uh, be free uh, free will people. Uh, so God did not make it, make us robots. Uh, God created us to be thinkers. Uh, we see things, we feel things, we uh, we think we know things, and and you know in essence where where uh, we can talk about the jealousy that uh, came up in um, in Lucifer, but it goes even deeper than that. And really, truly, the answer is, I don't know, but let me give you the theological. <laughs> yeah. You know, we, you know it, 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 it happened that he just really, um, he went away from God. How, what what kind of war um, was this? Was this uh, fist to cup? I don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. But I do know that, that um, the Bible says in Revelation chapter uh, 12, verse 7, that and there was war in heaven and Michael and mm -hmm. the angels and, and 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 you know it goes on and says and there was no longer in this space uh for him uh he was mm. out of heaven I don't know if he not, if um if uh Michael pulled out the, the, the glory sword I don't know yeah. I do know that the mind uh, of God was uh or Satan was not able to to stay in the presence of God and in the presence of God, sin cannot uh, dwell. Um, how did it come in a perfect world? I don't know. You know, mm -hmm. but the good thing is that one day the story of redemption will also have the story of how it truly, truly um, got started. I know the right answers mm -hmm. to give, but I'm not deal with that tonight. I want to deal with from the fact that we really don't know because any 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 answer you give. Um, somebody can say, but, 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 and so I'm going to leave it even as that, if that's okay. what y'all, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I mean, you might get some angry letters. But, I know. But, but I know. Stones. You, know, you can I know the right that. answer. Exactly. <laughs> I know the right answer. But <laughs> no, I appreciate that, brother. Thank you. Thanks. So, Jen, what can yeah. we learn? about this dragon falling from the verses uh, in the book of Revelation uh, that, that kind of described it there in Revelation 12, uh, verse 7 through, I think, 17 or, or so. What can we learn about that? Yeah, so much, so much. There's so much description there. Um, mm -hmm. We know that the dragon who, you know, we understand um, is Satan. Uh, going back to verse 9, and the great dragon was thrown down, the age-old serpent, he gets all the names, right? <laughs> the dragon, right, right. The <laughs> serpent, who is called the devil and Satan, right? So we get all the references. So we know for sure we're talking about Satan, right? Mm -hmm. The dragon is Satan. He's the de defeated, you know, arch enemy mm -hmm. of God, you know, ever since he stepped to God and defied him, you know, because of his own pride and, and self-deception. This is, this is who he is, right? Um, he accused God of being unfair, you know, he's accused God of being a dictator, <laughs> you know, he's been mm -hmm. trying, and, and ever since he's been trying, you know, he deceived a third of the angels, um, and ever since he's been trying to siphon people away from God, you know, getting to experience God, getting to walk in a relationship with God, he's been uh, inspiring a misrepresentation of God, in fact, creating distractions and manufacturing counterfeits and influencing, you know, earthly powers and just just human beings in 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 general um, to mm -hmm. be self-sufficient, to, to set themselves up as as gods. You know, um, you don't need God. Uh, you can do it another way. I mean, he's responsible for drawing people away. I mean, uh, millennium 
of, of individuals uh, away and deeper into, you know, in, in sin and, and debauchery. And he's the author and he's a perpetuator of sin. Uh, and he did and does everything in his power to detract from God, to create mm. a counterfeit, right? Because he thinks, mm -hmm. you know, on some level that he is, you know, a God and, and to trap people so that they essentially won't have access. And so when you read um, these verses, right, 17, um, he went away to rage war. Um, let's see what else in uh, 13, four, uh, he bestows um, power uh, on, on the beast and, uh, you know, dominion and authority. And, and then there's, there's praise and worship of the beast uh, mm -hmm. who's like the beast, you know, and then in 16, um, you have those entities those spiritual entities that serve him, you know, that do his bidding. And so essentially he's just that, uh, that contrast um, mm -hmm. that has been perpetuating um, sin and perpetuating a, oh my goodness, a counterfeit and uh, everything that is opposite God, yeah, that's what he does. Anything you can think mm -hmm. of that fits, you know, fits that category. That is the dragon, AKA Satan, mm. AKA BKA, uh, the serpent, <laughs> AKA, mm. You know, Lucifer. <laughs> yeah. You know, let us be clear who the dragon uh -huh. is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I love mm -hmm. it. I love it. So the so thank you for not only painting the picture, but 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 very vividly taking us, walking us on that journey through through the uh those those chapters. So Drew, when did this happen? When was this this fallen angel as 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 Jen called him, the old serpent, the dragon, Satan himself? When was he cast out of heaven? I mean, what's the timeline for this, I guess? Like I said, if you look back at Revelations 12 and in verse 8, like Pastor JD was saying, you know, immediately after the war, it said, and there was no longer a place found for them. Mm -hmm. um, and this to me echoes that father-son fight, you know, that, that happens mm -hmm. in many a households. You know, they they no longer want to respect the authority of the father. They know they mm -hmm. think they're the man or they know everything, you know, or they're ready to mm -hmm. do their own thing. And it gets to that confrontation. And, you know, sometimes it even comes to blows. And, and you know, yeah. after that fight is done, you know, to give them that look like, son, you got to go. You got to go. Mm -hmm. and, and I feel like oftentimes, you know, humanity echoes, you know, the, the, the things of divinity. You know, it's just like in heaven. This lucifer the serpent the devil the bkas and akas you know mm -hmm. he really didn't want to stay within the authority of god he he didn't want to mm -hmm. believe the things that he had been told and told and shown you know about yeah. his position and he he wanted to be like god and created enough of a rumbling where a flat out war broke out mm -hmm. and and mm -hmm. just like any other loving father is like hey i cannot allow this to be in my house it would only infect and poison you know yeah. everything else if i let it remain so it's like you mm -hmm. got to go you know he's, your bags are already packed <laughs> <You know? laughs> mercy mercy no yeah. was wasted yeah. but he was immediately you know shown the door because we know if you let mm -hmm. it linger even a second longer it was only going to make things worse yeah mm -hmm. wow that's good appreciate that appreciate that it's it's and and this is never mind i'll, I'll move on i'll move on that's that's good that's good appreciate that so, <laughs> uh, so i'm trying to i'm trying to facilitate and not opinionate i'm i'm learning, I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, uh brother bellamy uh what does the bible reveal about pre-fall satan where can we find this information what does it say about this this entity that we're contending with Well, if you look in the book of Ezekiel, um, mm -hmm. uh, 28, 12 through 17, uh, it gives a description. Um, it mainly talks about pride. Uh, if we can just describe, and Ellen White, she talks about what he looked like. Uh, he was beautiful. Uh, you know, some of the ladies think, you know, Denzel or Will Smith or mixed with whoever mm -hmm. they feel is, you know, a handsome man. But this, this brother, he was about that life. Uh, he was in the presence of God. He can come and talk to the father. And um, when he came out of there, you know, he had it all looking all, you know, looking nice and the jewels yeah, reflecting yeah. God's presence, you know, and he kind of mm -hmm. put the little LeBron James shoulders, you know, back, 
Like, yo, it's me. You know, hey, God, yeah. it's all on me. It ain't the Lakers. I'm a LeBron. Mm -hmm. It's just me. I'm the Lakers, uh -huh. right? Yeah. I met a boy yeah. speaking. I went to the church and hear these Laker fans. Uh, but anyway, uh, you know, uh, Ezekiel <laughs> talks about pride. And if you look at society today, and I want to go ahead of myself, but if you look at society today, uh, it's about selfies. It's about me. Uh, it's about uh, the filter. Uh, and it's not really you, but it's the filter. Uh, it wasn't mm. Lucifer. It was God. God on him. Oh, God. And so uh, when you're looking at the times mm. now, uh, Lucifer has a short time and he is actually putting that on the very thing that was on him. Uh, and when you look at self and it's all about you, uh, you know, pride comes before a great fall. And as you notice, Lucifer mm. did fall uh, and there was war in heaven uh, and then he was cast down. Uh, and so now he began to roam. And, and we see, as Pastor J.D. talked about, um, as it relates to Cain and Abel. Uh, then we have these killings. Uh, and then we had a, a, an angel outside of Eden uh, with, a, with a nice sword. Like, I wish you all come up in here with, uh, you know, trying to get their fruit again or whatnot. And so we have all these things that are happening uh, because of Lucifer's fall. And it all started with pride. Mm -hmm. uh, and so if we mm -hmm. have to be very careful um, in giving God the praise, honor, and glory, David talks about in Psalm, not unto us, O Lord, but unto thy name bring glory. Like, it's not me. I don't want that Lucifer mm. spirit. Mm -hmm. I want that, that mm -hmm. thing of it's all about me. I, I'm going to fall. And so, you know, yeah. we like to come to church and look nice, but, you know, hey, brother, you look good. Well, praise God. Sister, or, or sister, you look nice. Well, praise God. You got to give him the glory because when you get that self mm -hmm. coming in, mm -hmm. get them LeBron mm -hmm. James shoulders back, you're like, mm -hmm. yeah, it is mm -hmm. me. Yeah, it is me mm. and then it's like nah, people ain't want to fool with you because you got a lot of pride about mm -hmm. yourself and so you look yeah, at how yeah, yeah. it manifested and how he looked at himself and he thought uh the glory of god on him was him uh but it was god and so we got to be very careful uh and and learn from clubfoot i'll put that that nickname on him too or clubfoot uh lucifer um we have to learn from this brother of what not to do all right so uh, that's much it with ezekiel mm -hmm. uh talking about pride yeah Mercy. Please, please, mm -hmm. people, we're not talking about any kind of foot ailments or or being disrespectful to, to any any walks or, or, or <laughs> no, no, wait a it's, just a it's just a nickname. It's just a nickname. No, I just want to make just sure. Just a nickname. That people, AKA. Yeah, yes, people, AKA. Please, AKA. No, yeah. don't, don't, don't take it and run with it. Please, please. So with all of this, this, this hubris, this, um, uh, arrogance, this rebellious spirit that thought that he could contend and would contend with God. Uh, it's, if it's so dangerous, why didn't God destroy him, J.D., as, as soon as it was found in him? It's not like he had to wait for it to be revealed. So why didn't God just go ahead and lay him out um, immediately? You know, um, I, I gave these things some, some thoughts. And, and so mm -hmm. I always answer from the perspective of that person who doesn't know uh, Jesus um, mm. uh, or, or doesn't even understand scripture or have a, um, you know, have a, this, you know, just don't trust um, the Bible because it's. But when I think when I thought about this. You know, one of the things that you know we always talk about extraterrestrial beings that's that's visiting this earth. I don't know anything about no extraterrestrial beings. I've never seen one. Um, seen what they 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 feature on TV. Don't know if it's real or not. Um, but what one thing I do know is that when you look at the book of Job, it talks about um, um, people who represent other worlds, yeah. um, and um, we are not the only people in the universe, or we're not the only living beings in the, in the universe. There are others. Uh, there are other angels that, that are there. Um, we have the, uh, we have um, other, other worlds that are in existence. Yeah. And imagine if God had just destroyed um, Satan, uh, Lucifer, uh, immediately. Imagine what, what that yeah. would have done. While he would have been justified in doing, it, uh, doing that, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. what the world, the rest of the world, will be looking at is a God that that while we have free will, um, what 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 will happen is that you, God, 
will destroy me immediately um, if I if I mess up. And so instead of serving God um, out of love, uh, with love, we would begin to serve him um, out of fear as opposed to mm. out of love. And I, and I, and I think that, that that's very important for us to understand that, that God is a God of love and we have to worship him uh, because we love him, uh, not because we fear him, not because we, um, we don't understand him, um, not because the pastor say so, or grandmommy, mammy said so, or grandpappy said so. It's because mm. it's love. So when you have the whole mm. world on, they are putting God, almost putting God on um, on trial. What are you going to do? Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? Are you going to destroy him? And, you know, mm. he deserves it. And so you can hear the 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 the, the, the conversation between, even in, the, in heaven, the angels. You know, is he about to do it? He deserves it. Some might be looking and said, um, "But we don't know. We don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, Satan might be. I mean, Lucifer might be right. He might have something going on." And so, what that would have done would have would have placed a doubt in the minds of mm -hmm. all the onlookers for the mm -hmm. rest of eternity. They would mm -hmm. wonder why was Satan. Wow. But life has to play out. It had to play out. So that they can see that the God that we are serving truly is a just, but not just just, a merciful, merciful mm -hmm. God, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I, I can go on, but but yeah, I'm just I leave it right there. And it's, it's 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 as we were looking at this this week, what what just kept hitting me in the face is how one that God is is a long term long planning, long suffering God. Like no, yeah. To, yeah. To, to to just yeah, long, yeah, exactly. Long in the nose. Just just allowing this for the interest of those who don't exist yet so that they could understand him as he truly is. And um, you know, I always get this question in classes is well if God knew we were gonna go through this, why would he do this? But he's the one that suffers most. He's the one that's on trial as you pointed out. And yet, and still, grace extended to Satan, his his enemy, for eternity, not through eternity, but for eternity. So, man, uh, I, I appreciate that again. Um, just, just, just sharing that. Thanks, my brother, for laying that out for us. What lessons can we draw? Uh, Pastor JD laid that out excellently of just what God could have done, and what sometimes we might have wanted Him to do, but He didn't. So what lessons can we draw about the character of God as he deals with this most evil entity? Let's start with Jen and then anybody else that wants to jump in can jump in. Yeah, God is mercifully strategic. <laughs> you know, Great way of putting it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, JD said that he's just and he's merciful. And I'm always talking about one of my favorite passages, Exodus 34, 6 and 7. He tells us who he is there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? And you get the the you get just and you get merciful there. So if that is who he is, then that is how he's going to maneuver, right? That's how he's mm -hmm. going to maneuver mm -hmm. when it comes to evil. And so um, I feel like we don't know, and we're not going to understand um, mm -hmm. every every way he maneuvers or why he maneuvers because the glass is still cloudy and it's still dark, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we're not going to, you know, the same way a kindergartner is not going to understand how to do calculus, you know, unless they're um, a genius, right? So that we, there's an exception there. But generally, um, you can probably try to teach a kindergartner calculus, but if they don't really know their numbers yet, or that's all they know, they're not going to understand what to do with that. So I, sometimes I feel like the things of God is like that. It's just like, yeah, you can explain, try to explain it to us all day long, but it's still going to be a little bit cloudy. But we can draw um, reasonable conclusions and we can um, pull out um, reasonable implications because we know that God is 
he said, because we know who he is, who he says he is, right? We know that God plays a long game and he's, we know he's just not out for blood, right? He does exactly as he is. Yeah. You know, if I could just step in, uh, Dr. Jim. Yeah, jump uh, in, bro. You make a great point. Thanks, PT. Um, you know, he's not trying to clap back. You know, in this society, we quit. Mm. You know, if, you know, mm -hmm. if, I, yeah. if I get you, you're going to come back for me. You know, right. one, one reality show uh, person says, uh, don't come for me lest I sin for you. Uh, and so, mm -hmm. God have mercy. It's like, yeah. yo, God can do it better than you yeah. can. And some of us mm -hmm. want to go slash tires and 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 go tit for tat uh you gonna mm -hmm. lose it's gonna be a lose lose but when you let god yeah. do it he knows That's how right. to chastise us in secret he knows how to yeah. uh you know touch your bank account and, and, and touch your health uh but it's Mercy. still for his glory because he changed his mess to mm -hmm. miracles oh god help me somebody so he yeah. knows how to take care of us <laughs> you look at isaiah yeah. 13 11 uh and mm -hmm. i will punish <laughs> the the mm. world for their evil. I will punish mm -hmm. not you. And then it goes mm -hmm. on to say, and the wicked for their iniquity, and I will cause the arrogance of the proud to cease mm -hmm. and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. So he said, no, no, no. I, I got this sister Bernice Jenkins. I got this brother John Jacob Jingleheimer Smith. I know how to do this. They're my children. And there are times <laughs> yeah. I'll be yeah. them to the side and have yeah. their brothers and sisters wait out in the foyer. And let me have a little talk with you. Yeah. And I'm going to touch uh -huh. you. And I'm going to be with you. I'm going to let you know I love you. Mm. Let me give you this one quick story. Mm. My mother, I get maybe two spankers in my day. I was a good boy. Come on, let me somebody. And the time uh -huh. that she spanked me the second time, she came in the room and she said, now, son, uh -huh. I love you. And I'm like, uh -huh. okay, I'm confused. Now, you know, the you know, people yeah. get confused. I said, okay, yeah. let me, let's pray first. Now, Father, mm -hmm. as I spank him, help him to realize mm. What he's done is wrong. And so after that, yeah. I'm like, oh, mama, you don't love me. Ugh. And she's yeah. like, oh, I do. Yeah. And so I will walk out. Now, if you tear that room up, I'm coming back up here. So mm -hmm. she loved me, but she chastised me. So mm -hmm. only God can do it, let him do it. And as, as humans, mm -hmm. we, we don't want to let go. That's when That's the cry right. comes in, the lose. I That's can right. do it, but it's not about you. God will take care of it. Mm. Mm. Amen. Anyone else? What lessons can we get from yeah. God's character and how he handled that, the, 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 the Satan situation, for lack of a better term? Anyone else? All right. Let's spin now, around. I, go go ahead, J.D. Yeah, I mean, to, to go back to the, 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 that space, just and merciful uh, God, he's a loving God. So much so, and I think um, Jen said it, that he he is willing, not was willing. He is willing, continually willing to um, to be judged, um, even though we judge him incorrectly. He's right. constantly wow. um, judged by us. I, I, I listen. I love to listen to these guys, you know, and I, I just pr I pray for them because they say some some dumb things. I'm gonna just use the word dumb. This is some mm -hmm. dumb thing. Mm -hmm. God, is, God is, and that's the reason why I started off where I started off. I don't yeah. know. Um, uh -huh. Is because when we try to give so much, so many answers, um, there are people, the lost liars. I don't know what they call. Uh, they try mm -hmm. to philosophize, philosophize their way out of things, fluff their way out of, uh, out of things. Um, and God is willing to sit there. I'm trying to think of a movie that I've seen. That, you know, the Father just willing to take it. Oh, you know, yeah. he just we just punching him on him, just 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 punishing him, and he's willing mm -hmm. to all because he know. Um, it's funny. I give you a quick story. I, I promise I'm done. A couple years ago, I was in the church. I won't call the names. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not um, and I was lied on. You know, Mercy. and I, was, you know, I, I'm my father's child. I have a little bit of anger issues at time, and so that's why mm -hmm. I'm always. Just smiling because you know the more I smile is more I feel like I'm controlling my, my <laughs> anger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Father is, my father would snap on you in a second, and you know I I remember he wanted to get up and just tell the woman, tell the person mm. that, that they are. <laughs> and that please <laughs> tell the person <laughs> you you you're lying. 
You're lying. Mm-hmm. You know, wow. You're lying in the church, you know. And the Lord, I remember the Lord telling me, just JD, just sit there. Just don't say mm-hmm. words. Sit there. Sit there. And I sat there and I took it, y'all. I took it. Mm-hmm. I took it. You know, and I'm thinking to myself, how much more God mm-hmm. knowing justify if you just just Perfect. wipe this thing right now. Yet in his mercy, he takes it. Mm-hmm. Merciful, just, yeah. just and merciful. Mm-hmm. You know what, Pastor JD? Wow. I can say one more thing, PT. You know, you're looking at Jesus on the cross. You know, you know, back when I was in the academy, and he said, "What would you do?" I said, "I get off that cross. All y'all going down. Yeah, y'all be like, hey, yeah. no, you know what I mean? Real. It's like, look, he's on that cross and he's having a dialogue with the Father." And he said, you know, the sun stopped shining. You know, everyone talks about these angels, thousands upon ten thousands of angels mm-hmm. in the atmosphere ready to set it off up in here. But he said, forgive yeah. them for they know not what they do. Basically, put your, put your swords down, mm-hmm. put your gat up. I, I, I'm going to do this because mm-hmm. I love them. And so that's suffering. Mm-hmm. That's merciful, uh, Jesus, to say, you know what, even though it hurts me, I I love you enough to stay up here for the long run, for the, for the long haul, mm-hmm. for, for the short term and for the long term. Not for you, yeah. but for your generations to come. And so as you stated, uh, J.D., you know, looking at his character, it's fascinating um, how how patient he is uh, with us. Mm-hmm. Uh, in spite of our hot trash mess, dot org, dot edu, dot org, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, and it's intense, mm-hmm. our mess, <laughs> uh, a hot mess. We smell so bad. It's just feel like filthy rags. Yeah. But yet he still, oh my he still brings us into his bosom. It's like, yeah, you smell really bad, but I love you. And, yeah. and I'm going to take care of you when I got you. Mm-hmm. And it's like, wow, can't nobody do you like Jesus? We only realize that when we get older. When we're young, like, oh, okay, mm-hmm. Sister yeah. Jesus. I don't know, whatever. But when you're going mm-hmm. through some things and you done, you done backslid and whatever, you you going through it. Like, mm-hmm. oh, oh, Jesus still loves you in spite of it all? Yeah. yeah. Man, you yep. better give up. You mm-hmm. better let Jesus know that you love him. God help me, somebody. Mercy, yeah. mercy, mercy, mercy. Amen, amen. amen. So, um, we kind of we kind of touched on these this, these next two questions of of how did Satan choose to fight and and why didn't God um, fight that way? So we'll we'll move on to um, just the the war in heaven. In a nutshell, like what lessons can we get? out of this as we see that war came forth in its perfect place and and how do you see that relating to your own personal battle with evil let's start with you dr drew and then work our way back around i think the first thing that you can learn you know from you know reading about the war in heaven is just how intense this struggle is within us you mm-hmm. know when when mm-hmm. you hear that word war um, you know, in my, in my mind, I tend to think back of either the most recent war that you experienced or some of the great ones. Um, mm-hmm. you know, you think, you know, one of the things I love from history is the study of World War II. And again, mm-hmm. like just mm-hmm. to the end yeah. of the degree, that brought us the atom bomb, <laughs> you know, that yeah. unified mm-hmm. countries that yep. really, you know, didn't talk, you know, prior, prior to this war. And in my mind, I just think of how deep you know, that that conflict ran. I mean, literally the entire world was pulled one way or the other, you know, mm-hmm. in, in this situation. And that's what happens with us sometimes even on a daily basis. You know, when you truly are at war, it is polar opposites. It is, like I said, one side truly fighting to not only win against the other side, but to exterminate the other side. Mm-hmm. And And I feel like that's, truly what the enemy wants within each and every one of us, but we have to die daily. We have to surrender our spirit, you know, to God, because if we don't, one side is ultimately going to win. Um, And we just have to choose that right side while we still have the time. Mm. Amen. Uh, JD, what do you, what do you want to add? You got anything you want to add to that about lessons we can learn from battle in heaven to our personal battles here on earth? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, again, when you look at the the the, the battle that we are facing, um, you know, we always we all say, you know, we we get to say, you know, the battle is um, um, over the mind. Is the battle is 
um, who, who's going to win who. Um, and as uh, Doc, Doc Ju said, um, you know, we have we have so much struggle with amongst mm -hmm. us within ourselves. Uh, mm -hmm. One person said, one person said, you know, uh, Satan has done his job and he just sits back and watch us struggle. Mm -hmm. you know? So it's not about Satan; it's the inner man that we're dealing with, mm -hmm. the inner man that we're fighting. The battle over our minds, yes, it's one thing, um, but when we are willing to give it up easily, mm. um, it's mm. thing. and and that's where we are right now. It feels that way to me. The the the, the farther we go uh, in the future, is more we are willing willing to say, you know, I'm done fighting. I've had enough. Mm -hmm. I've been one um we call it conflict. <laughs> um I brought up uh -huh. and you know it, 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 you can either say I, I've had enough and give up, um, give in and allow the enemy uh to win, or you can fight and fight and fight. But this war that we're fighting is not a war of fist to cuff, it's a mm -hmm. war listen. I'm willing to turn my life over to you. Um, yeah. Sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. We can quote this. Yeah. We, we, uh, repentance, that word repentance, uh, we always um, talk about it, but we, we don't really do justice by it because when we, when mm -hmm. we think about repentance, repentance is not you just turning from your sin. It's really, and I heard it said so eloquent and I love it, it's really turning from sin, self, the perfect Christ. Mm. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. which way we turn, if it's yeah. not Christ, is back to our sins. Mm. And which way you turn, if Christ is not right there in front of you. So it's not turning from your sin uh, to, to, to a different way. Because we are sinful. Come sinful, on. Desperately wicked. Uh, we, mm -hmm. we, we are sin. Born in sin, shaping in iniquity. So any which way we turn but to Jesus, we're turning back to sin. So that that war is real. And the only way mm -hmm. we can war is to turn to the one who's perfect. Amen. You might have got anything you want to add before we move on? Yeah, go ahead, Mike. Um, you know, uh, uh, Dr. Jew and, and Pastor JD made a good point about the mind. Uh, many of their all their mm -hmm. points are amazing. Uh, one stands out to me is the mind. It says uh, two things: by beholding, we become changed and guard the avenues of your mind. Uh, mm -hmm. Equating this to sports, for example, uh, you come when well, you see Mike Tyson in his prime, prime Mike Tyson. Mm -hmm. You see the eyes. All he had on were the black shorts, black mm -hmm. shoes, and the red fits. And he he mm -hmm. has that look. And they're walking, they're pacing. He's just looking at you. Looking to annihilate you, right? It's all mm -hmm. new. You look at Michael Jordan, Michael, not B. Jordan, but Michael Jeffrey Jordan, uh, the mm -hmm. GOAT. I know PT that will be a, a blasphemous right now and so forth, but the LeBron, but uh -huh. Michael Jordan, uh -huh. they, said they, uh -huh. feared him. <laughs> they feared him. They loved LeBron, but they feared Michael. And so when he came on the court, they already lost because the mentality is mm. that's Michael Jordan. I cannot defeat mm. him. And so we mm -hmm. look at the Lucifer, we look at Satan, and we say, well, he's the prince of this world, and, and, and we, we can't defeat him. Well, guess what? Jesus has already won mm -hmm. the battle and the war. Uh, what we mm -hmm. have to do is stay mm -hmm. fast and stay focused on what we need to do to be saved. Uh, and so it's mm -hmm. all a mental thing. Sports mm -hmm. is mental. If you can get into the, the opponent's mental, then you win. And so we guard the mm -hmm. avenues of our minds and understand that Jesus is able to keep us from falling. Anything we fall short of, anything we lack, he will give us. And so when you mm -hmm. have that mentality mm -hmm. of, listen, I'm a child of the king. I'm going to be all right. Yeah, my bills are due, but I'm going to be all right. Yes, I have cancer, but I know uh, the, the master physician. Yes, I'm in trouble, but I know the lawyer in the courtroom. Yes, I have some issues, but I can go to the hospital, which is the church. And I know Jesus is mm -hmm. there and he can heal me from all ailments, uh, mentally, physically, mm -hmm. and financially. And so just the mentality of how we go in this thing, knowing that God has already won is essential. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. 
And yeah, I, I think that's that's so important. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, battle of Mike. the doctors. Battle of the doctors. Go ahead. <laughs> no, Mike, I, I think you just kind of gave me an aha moment, you know, with that. Thank mm. you so much. But like kind of using your sports analogy, it reminds me along the lines of Tiger Woods. You know, mm. so many golfers would be way ahead in the lead, but just yeah. Tiger's coming. Tiger's coming. You know, and by that <laughs> yeah. Sunday, they found a way where they kind of self-destructed. And yeah. Tiger just went and won that championship. Mm -hmm. But as soon as his wife cracked him with that golf club, you know, and he was Ooh. no longer considered invincible, you know, he couldn't chase down anybody anymore. These people were just beating him left and right. And he's never been the mm -hmm. same in, ever since. And I, I feel like I said, we should almost be looking at the enemy the same wow. way. We already know yeah. who's defeated. <laughs> you know, uh -huh. we already know uh -huh. we and got, got ourselves. <laughs> Whether he's chasing us or not, we should know the championship is already ours. But thank uh, you for bringing up that point, Mike. I, I, I just had to jump in there real quick. Sorry, Jen. <laughs> no, no, no. You're good because, you know, everybody has been along the same lines. Like, but I, you know, I just want to push that point, turning to God. Because, you know, when I think about this, you know, what lessons can we learn from the battle in heaven that relates to our own personal battle with evil? Listen, he is not expecting me to be mm -hmm. out here in combat because mm. when i when i'm that, doing that i'm thinking there's something that i'm doing that is securing my salvation or i'm adding to what what christ has already done i can't add anything to to the work that's already been done so but what i can do is i can turn to him and so when i was thinking mm -hmm. about this question i said the safest place in this battle because we know the war is already won the safest place in these battles is in his presence seeking mm. his face right mm. knowing and re and reminding ourselves that he's done the work and he's working on our behalf where is jesus right now right mm. he's already handled it i let me stay close to him let me stay close to him and everything that that i need um how i need to maneuver as i'm navigating mm. this crazy life you know mm -hmm. this this sin you know encrusted world I need to let me just stay with him. So that's the mm -hmm. safest place I'm thinking when it comes to battle. You know, it's not in me, it's in him. It's wow. not my work, it's his work. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love that, Jen. Um, because the war is already won. Calvary has already yeah. brought victory. But my fight is in my phase of the battle, right? Like, so uh, just like. That's Even right. though Hitler had already been defeated and, and had already it had already happened in Germany, there were still these battles that were happening before the troops could go home, before the war could truly be over. Even yeah. though it was already won, these battles had to be fought. And that's that's I, I love the way you put that is that we still have a fight where we are. We still have the, the promised land was already promised, but they still had to go through Jericho and these other things. So they're our. Our fight is our phase, and we still have to go through that. But victory is assured. The plan is already laid out. The blueprint is already set forth, and all we have yeah. to do is turn to him. Excellent, excellent example. I, I appreciate yeah. that. I think that I, that I know that 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 was an eye opener for me. That yeah, we still have this 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 fight for for our yeah. time and our space, and I I, I appreciate that. Um, speaking of of Jericho, uh, Joshua shares with the, the children of Israel. Um, uh, and if it seems evil to serve, to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So God is a God of choice. And so mm. when did you first realize the importance of your personal choice in this battle between good and evil? When did it first kind of hit you that you have a place to play? Or was it just when Jennifer pointed it out right now? <laughs> but but, but as, 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 and this is for any of us, uh, uh, when did it first kind of dawn on you that you have a role yet in this quest, to borrow a quote from Lord of the Rings? <laughs> I'll jump in because I, I oh just, yeah thank you Jim oh, go ahead come on no, yeah no, no. Jim, go ahead. 
the point at which I recognized that my choices had consequences. Because there was a point in time, there was quite, quite, quite a few points in time where I was just mm -hmm. smooth sailing, mm -hmm. doing what I wanted to do and not mm -hmm. recognizing that my choices had, there were some outcomes that I may not have bargained for. So when mm -hmm. that became mm -hmm. apparent, mm -hmm. I was disturbed. I was mm. disturbed in my mind and in my heart and I didn't know what to do with that at first. It's almost mm. just like, an awakening. Oh, that actually, you actually probably shouldn't be doing that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, this, le oh, why, why do I feel weird? I never felt weird, you know, after doing that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I feel like, I yeah. feel like I'm, 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 I'm more aware of something. And so I mm -hmm. think that for me at that point, I was just like, hmm, this is new. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This, this yeah. is different, but yeah. 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 What about you, Bellamy? You know, I remember um, back in 98, um, my best friend, Josh Livingston, any of our Pine Forge Academy alumnus or attendees, um, if you look in your gym, you'll see number 32. That's my best friend, mm -hmm. Josh Livingston. Uh, he was murdered in 1998. Uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina. That's where I'm from, Carolina. Um, and when he was shot and killed, um, there was a um, awakening uh, where we were all church boys, you know, the federations, you know, playing ball, you know, so forth and so on. But then there's something mm -hmm. that has happened within our group. Um, and so we find ourselves thinking, okay, are we gonna stay in the church? We're mad with God. Mm -hmm. Why you do this to Josh? Mm -hmm. Josh was a big homie. Uh, he's done nothing mm -hmm. wrong. Uh, he was a church like me. You know what I mean? What What is going on? Um, and mm -hmm. I'm like, yo, uh, we all had this thing. We all went to Myrtle Beach and we're like, yo, um, many of us, um, not going to name names, but some of us went into drugs, you know, some with the alcohol, mm -hmm. some staying in the church. And so we mm -hmm. had that epiphany like, okay, are we going to stay close to God? Are we going to abandon God and say, forget this church thing, man? Josh was our everything. That was our homie. And Jesus was like, yo, yeah. yo, hold on a minute. I love him more than you love him. Mm. All right? I got Josh. Mm -hmm. I know yeah. you don't know the plans. I got this under control. I am God. Where yeah. were you, Joe? And so I looked at it and said, you know what? I have to make a choice. Am I mm -hmm. going to stay with God? I'm going to rock with him? And I rock with him. Mm -hmm. um, I stayed mm -hmm. in the church. And you know, a lot of my mm -hmm. bank accounts was this birth, it was death day and so forth and so on. But as a young kid, 17, I had an opportunity to do other things, but I stayed close to him. And it was difficult, young people, if you listen to me. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a crossroads uh, you may be going through right now. I am telling you right now, stay close to mm -hmm. Jesus. Are you sound old? Yeah. Bellamy? Nah, man, I've been there, done They got a t-shirt and a balloon, you feel me? I'm mm -hmm. telling you, mm -hmm. my best friend was mm -hmm. laying in a casket, you know, suited yeah. and booty. And I'm like, am I mm -hmm. next? And so I'm like, right. look, I got to make sure that I get right and mm -hmm. stay right. Uh, so mm -hmm. if it's my time, I'm good with God. And so we don't know yeah. the day or the hour uh, if it's our mm -hmm. last day. But you got to make sure yeah. that never, and, and PT you know, says in his class as well, never make a life decision off of a moment. Yeah. It's a negative. Mm -hmm. don't, mm -hmm. don't, don't rush. Let God lead mm -hmm. you. Uh, your arms are yeah. too short to box with God. You don't want that. Mm -hmm. So you lean on to him, his arms and to box you, it's to hold you. Uh, and so take mm -hmm. heed. So when you're on that crossroads, make sure you choose the right thing and follow Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. 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 I, you know? I gotta jump in on this one. Go ahead. Go ahead. You don't mind. Um I feel like, you know, we all can look back at different stories, whether it's like as a teenager, mm -hmm. you know, in high school or maybe even in college or, mm -hmm. you know, during some of those young, young and dumb years. But for me, that that time where it really hit was about a month ago. Mm -hmm. um, somebody I, I truly admired and, and looked up to um, made a very bad decision and his entire world has come crumbling down. Mercy. Mm -hmm. He's losing his wife, losing his job losing his home, wow. he's losing his kids, you know, mm -hmm. all because of one night he made a very bad decision. Mercy. And it shook me to my core 
because as somebody who, you know, has been divorced, I remember, you know, just going through the different emotions of that, where there'd be some nights where you'd be angry or lonely or sad or just mad at God and things like that. And how close was I to making a similar mm. decision that could have my whole house of cards come, come like, crumbling mm. down? And mm -hmm. for me, it's like I look back and I remember I just thank God that it's like he held me and kept me close enough. And just, you know, the, the angels continue to minister to me where I made it through those rough nights. And, yeah. mm, you know, to sit here and I was like and, and it just kind of popped in mind like that very well could have been me. And I've mm -hmm. kind of made this decision where it's like, all right, God, you know, I, I never want to let go of your hand to the point that I am you know, actively making those type of decisions and, and, and just embracing that, that type Amen. of mindset. Um, mm -hmm. And for me, I think it's, it's that type of thing where, you know, a lot of times, even as all of us, you know, we've tried to minister to others and, and we push it for a younger perspective, but sometimes mm -hmm. you are a grown adult, <laughs> you know, when that mm -hmm. light bulb really comes on. So that's I, true. I think, you know, yeah, it's great if it happens early, but sometimes that mm -hmm. that light bulb really truly hits later yeah. in life. Um, mm -hmm. But the one thing that's so great about God, going back to what we talked about earlier, He is so long suffering that mm -hmm. He'll let you be on the wrong side of forty, <laughs> you know, and still keep working with yeah. you, and still keep speaking, yeah. and still keep protecting mm -hmm. you, and still being long suffering, so that you have that chance, you know, to to realize, hey. Now you said the victory's won. I just have to choose. Yeah. The right so. Yeah. Yeah. No, I appreciate that. Um, yeah. It's, it's it's interesting that that you put that that there. It's it's one thing to realize that you you get to make personal choices. It's something else to realize the weight of those personal choices or the ramification of those personal choices. So um, I thank you for for kind of pointing that out. Yeah, we we may learn it early. We don't understand yeah. it fully. Uh, a lot of times until until later. Um, but speaking of choices, uh, our Lord and Savior made the ultimate choice. You you got something you wanted to add, JD? I, I, we can go on. We, we, we're you sure? Uh, well, this is your, this is your question, so you can okay, kind of. I, 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 I go, I'm backtrack on it. Go ahead. No, no, yeah, yeah. So you can kind of tuck them in together. Um, <laughs> but it, it, the, our Savior made the ultimate choice to right the wrongs that started with Satan in heaven that swept through heaven and eventually deposited itself here on this planet called earth. So where uh, there's some verses, Hebrews 2, 9, Galatians 3, 13, Second uh, Corinthians 5, so on and so forth. They talk about the immensity of Christ's sacrifice on the cross, the decision that he made to die for us to right these wrongs. Uh, what, mm. what do they say about this and how does and, and, and what else would you like to add as, as far as the last question is concerned as well? So uh, concerning the last question, um, mm -hmm. uh, the, the question was asked when I remember yes. uh, and the important, how important my, you know, what I do um, is mm -hmm. I remember being in, uh, again, in Afghanistan. And I remember um, sitting on that wall <laughs> um, early in the morning. Um, you know, looking out, making sure that those who are on the inside was protected. So I have to keep my eyes open, making sure mm -hmm. that um, that I'm on my duty, in, you know, perform my duty, making sure that um, I'm keeping watch in the middle of the night. Um, there are different individuals in the, in the military that and different uh, jobs um, that we do. <clears throat> and one one of the things that that we um, I realized while I was there was that from the cook to the truck driver, from the chaplain to the chaplain's assistant, from the captain to the private, we are all important. And if one person um, chooses not to do their job and do it well, then we risk the life, lives of others. Um, yeah. And and those that 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 really, um, as um, Dr. Jew was talking. Um, it really hit me um, that you know these things we we overlook certain things and think, okay, I'm 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 a little this or uh, I'm big that, but yeah. on this on the spectrum of spirituality, we are all important 
and we all have a part to play. And if we don't play that part well, um, then we will allow Satan to, to come in um, mm. and, and do his work. I was looking at, I'll leave it alone. I'll I, I say other, uh, something else uh, later on. Okay. Um, the questions, one more time, the question again. Ask that question again. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Jesus. No. so uh, Hebrews 2, 9, Galatians 3, 13, and, right. and Corinthians 5, they talk about the immensity of Christ's sacrifice. So what what do you get from those uh, about how vast and wide and far reaching this sacrifice of the cross truly was? I, I want to read yeah. Hebrews. I really want to look at Hebrews and you can read um, 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 Galatians and uh, Second Chron- uh, Corinthians as well. But I'm looking at Hebrews chapter um um, the chapter two, verse nine, verse nine, it says, mm-hmm. see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the, um, the, the suffering of, um, the suffering of death, um, mm-hmm. on, um, glory and honor that he, by the grace of God, uh, should taste death for every man. I mean, Mm. when I thought about that word taste and what he's tasting, um, I had to look up the word taste to Mm. sample. And then my mind just run to the the most deadliest poison that one can ever drink. Um, Mm. And even if it touches your skin, it's seeping into your pores. This Mm. is what did. We always talk about the second death, and a lot of people don't realize that there is a second death. Um, it is the it's the ultimate death. It is the death mm. that said everything is done. And when when we talk about that, Jesus Jesus took that on. He he sampled it so that we would never ever have to sample it. He tasted mm. it. Never ever have to to go to the space where where we will we'll experience. Yeah eternal death. Um, he 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 tasted death. He took rat, rat poison, so to speak, and said, mm-hmm. let me take it for you. I heard um, mm-hmm. uh, 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 Dr. Burbard um, preach, and he talked about how a bee came into his um, came and, and his daughter is deathly afraid of bee. Oh, well, it's a it, bee. A bee sting could, um, could, could hurt her real bad. I remember she said mm-hmm. he could kill her, but I know that it was uh, highly allergic to uh, to the bee sting. Mm-hmm. He grabbed it. He said he grabbed the bee and the bee stung him in his hand. And he showed uh, his daughter and said, see, the, the sting is right here. You know, it's, it, it's, it's in my hand. The bee can't hurt you anymore, sweetheart. Yeah. yeah. We're talking about that. And, you know, that's what Jesus did, but with the rat poison. <laughs> but mm-hmm. with spiritual rat poison that says, if I take what, what's the worst doc? What, what, what's the what's the worst poison that that you can think of besides rat poison? Uh, you know whatever it is, whatever that the poison is, he took it for us, so yeah, that we can experience eternal life. Mm, mm, mm. Man, that's 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 awesome. I appreciate that. Amen. Uh, I don't know. If, I, don't, I don't know if Drew, you thought of ricin um, from Breaking Bad, um, but, <laughs> but but yeah, yeah there's. <laughs> I felt guilty that I knew how quickly what type of poison to mention. <laughs> That's why I had to hesitate, Pastor JD. I really want to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> you can't answer it immediately with the with the deadliest kind of poison. You can't have that in your mental Rolodex. Like, this, just on a wow. page, that can't be in there. You can't have that. No, no, no. <laughs> but, that's hilarious. But yeah, no, JD, I, I love that. I love that because um, cause that, that, that shows us what sin really is. You know what I mean? Just to take this in injustice. Yeah, that, that, that taking in the poison so that we don't have to suffer is awesome. Appreciate that. So our last question before we leave. Um, is as we look at the cross because we 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 spent a lot of time talking about war in heaven and and all the things that satan did to try to uh, defeat uh christ and and his side but i want to look at what the cross does for us um how does it 
and this this vivid imagery of Christ suffering and dying uh, a humiliating death. How does this provide comfort for you as you go through life in 2024? Uh, Jen, this was this was something you were determined to get to. So I want to hear from you first. Yeah. So, you know, I automatically go to um, a teaching and learning um, scenario. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, as a teacher, I don't make the students responsible for um, what they don't know yet. Um, I don't make mm -hmm. them create create the curriculum and then have mm -hmm. to master it, right? That's not their mm -hmm. responsibility. So I provide mm -hmm. the curriculum. I provide the strategies. I provide the methods. I provide the tools, the time frame um, in order for them to learn and to work and to make mistakes and to develop some consistency and to eventually master the content, right? As long as they stick with me, they will improve, they will learn, they will master, mm -hmm. they will be successful. And when I think about the cross, this is the freedom that it gives me because again, the work is already done. As mm -hmm. long as I stick with Christ, he guarantees my salvation, right? Mm -hmm. He makes that space for me to exist in relationship with him, to make mistakes, to learn, to grow, um, to become more consistent, to be transformed, right? Mm -hmm. And so it happens in the context of relationship. And, um, you know, it's not up to me to move the salvation needle. It's mm -hmm. not up to me. I can never do enough. And he doesn't want my works first. Yeah. That's what kind of hit me when I was thinking mm -hmm. about this question. It's not my works. That's not what he's asking. He's asking for my heart mm. and my will. You know, and so that's yeah. what the cross does for me. Yeah. Amen. But Bellamy, what about you? Yeah. How does the Christ, the cross, excuse me, provide comfort for you? Um, it provides comfort in the sense of the the two beside him. Uh, mm. There was one um, who said, "Hey, don't forget about me." That right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just mm. being up there with Jesus and like, yo, you, yeah. you for real, man? What you got up there, man? And they they dying. Like, they up mm. there dying, all three of them. He's like, yo, what, tell me about the place. What, tell me about your house, man. What what you got yeah. up there? How's your furniture? What is is it nice? I want to go there with you. Don't forget. Yeah. And so I look at that and say, hey, Jesus, don't forget me, man. Every day, don't, don't forget me. Show me that you mm. love me today. Yeah, I got a cross. Everyone has a cross to bear, and my mom saw it say, "Hey, don't don't trade crosses with other people. Don't don't mm -hmm. try to you know have that mindset of hey, what that cross is is much lighter, and then I want that one. God has yeah. a cross for you to bear, and He'll help yeah. you. Mercy. But my man on the cross was like, "Yo, don't forget about me when yeah. you when you when you do this thing. When you come back, whatever you saying, I I'm gonna rock with you. Please don't forget about." Me. So anybody mm -hmm. out there say, hey, Jesus is about that life. Mm -hmm. He's not going to forget about you. Well, I, I was divorced. He's not going to forget about you. I got cancer. Mm -hmm. He's not going to forget about you. I got wayward children. He's not going to mm -hmm. forget about you. I'm getting bullied at school. He's not going to forget about you. You ask him, say, Jesus, don't forget about me. It's yeah. hard out here. You don't mm -hmm. forget about me, please. I please he will he will he got you so just mm -hmm. remember when i see the cross as i digress jesus don't forget about it when Mercy. you come back amen. amen jd dr drew anything you guys want to add well, Go ahead. well i gave yeah I, I gave the illustration with with uh dr bird um and i gave my illustration with with the war, I remember coming home um, from war or the conflict, how they called it. I remember coming home where I heard uh, bombs every single day. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, where I would go on the road um, from one uh, city to the next, um, and, and 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 just hear the gun, the the the, the, the gunshots going off, and mm -hmm. I remember ducking down and all these things I, I can see pictures in my head still that i i just hate to share and mm -hmm. but i came i came home Mercy. yeah war 
ends at the cross. I get my that that the mm-hmm. war ends at the cross. We may have a little bit of conflict here and there, a little battle here and there, but the war when Jesus um, uh, cried out, um, it is finished. Uh, what he's saying, the war is done. It's done. over. I'm declaring yep. victory over your life. I'm declaring victory over your family. I'm declaring victory. The war is over. Yes. And you don't ever have to go back to that place where war exists anymore. Amen. Start mm-hmm. in heaven, but there'll be no more war because Revelation tell there be a new heaven, a new earth. Come on. Mm-hmm. Yes. The cross tells me that I will live a in, in the place, uh, live a life of bliss with my creator yeah. uh, for the yeah. rest of eternity. That's what the, the cross does for me. That's a comfort that the cross mm-hmm. brings to me as one who read and hope for that day and, and pray for that day to come that, yeah. that, that the battle will be done because it's the done. war has ended and my savior, the one I'm calling yeah. king, has won the war for me. That's, that's what the yeah. cross does. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Do you have something you want to say? Um, real quickly, because I know we're in overtime at this point, mm-hmm. but it made me go back to Revelation 14, verse 3, and where it mm-hmm. talks about, and they sung a song Come know, on. that no others could sing. Mm-hmm. Um, and even us as humans, we love having that feeling of uniqueness. Mm-hmm. You know, if you were the only one in your family that, you know, got ice cream or, you know, or you come into school and you're the only person with those new pair of shoes or things like that. Like, yeah, it's nice to be set aside from everyone mm-hmm. and everything. And, mm-hmm. and, you know, the cross gives me that hope that if we can yes. just go on when those clouds open and we get to return with our father, we get to sing a song that yeah. nobody anywhere. Come else on can like i said otherworldly or this worldly can sing because they didn't meet jesus the way we did his blood yeah. for us you know yeah and and yeah. that's something that i think it it gives you a hope it, it can help renew your spirit when times that you're struggling or, or even questioning mm-hmm. and and i and to me that's where the cross truly sits in my heart you know it's it's things mm-hmm. may feel rough now but you already yeah. know the victory is won and and once you get to that other side, you will be able to express it in a way that no one else in the universe can. Mm. Yeah, yeah. That's Amen. the ultimate uniqueness I'd love to have right there. Amen. Amen. And as and as we close, just just uh, this is just a reminder. I think the cross is a constant reminder for me that just because I can't hear him doesn't mean that he stopped listening. That's right. Christ hadn't heard from the Father from the moment he entered Gethsemane. And Mm -hmm. on the cross, he continues to talk to the Father, Mm -hmm. even though he hasn't heard that. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. My God, my Mm -hmm. God, Mm -hmm. why hast thou forsaken me? It is finished. And to your hands, I commit my spirit. So just because he didn't hear from the father he knew that he was still listening and so that's what i want to leave us with today that as you look at the cross remember that even though you may not be able to hear him at the height of the storm even though you may not be able to hear him every moment that you're 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 you're, you're wanting to please yeah. know please understand that he hears you he uh-huh. understands you and he is answering you just as israel and egypt just as Joseph in Egypt, just as Christ on the cross, just yeah. because you can't hear the Father doesn't mean that he's no longer listening. So this has been the first word where we let the Bible be the last word. We pray that you are blessed. Please, again, like, share, and subscribe so that someone else can get the good word that God has given you. May God bless and keep you. We will see you next time. Thanks.